Hi, this is Jimmy Peppy, and I would like to welcome you back to Mercy, Grace, and Truth, my YouTube teaching channel. When Shem and Japheth did not look back at their father's sin, it's something that we see Jesus doing. We see Jesus doing this in the Gospels. Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So what we have to do is what Shem and Japheth did. We have to turn a blind eye on the sin that someone has caused us. The sin that has hurt us. The sin that maybe caused us to sin. The sin that caused us to shame. The sin that hurt yourself, your family, your friends. People live in a very hurt world. And I've said this before, that hurt people hurt people. And we live in a world, I'm, I'm studying right now to, to talk about the uh, Tower of Babel. And I, I want to limit it to two or three classes, but I honestly think I'm going to probably go overboard on that because there's so much I want to say about the world today. The concept of God not looking at our sin is expressed very well by Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 38, verse 17. He says, Behold, it was for my welfare that I had great bitterness, but in love you have delivered my life from the pit of destruction, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. It's like Isaiah talking to the Lord, talking to God. God of the Old Testament. Isaiah said that he was living in bitterness. God turned it around into love. Isaiah said that God had delivered his life from the pit of destruction. Now, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. Like Shem and Japheth did, God is doing that for us. John writes in his first epistle, uh, chapter 1, verses 7 to 9, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. So, there's a concept of having our sins blotted out there is the concept of having our sins cleansed from us. 
And John also points out the fact that he knows he's running to Christians here. He knows that each of us will sin. We are not perfect. If you cut your hand, you're going to bleed. We're not some mystical thing where, where everything is going to be fine. Uh, we each have troubles, trials, tribulations, and in that, we don't always react to those troubles, trials, situations properly, and we sin, and we may cause others to sin. But our attitude always has to be a repentant heart towards God. In Psalm 103, verses 11 and 12, and I'm going to add a little special class to this later on. It says, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. God removes our sin, our transgression, as far as the east is from the west. And so we have Noah, who sinned. Noah, who was covered. And Noah, whose sons did not look back on their sin. That is the work of Christ in each of our lives. It's the gospel. Just tucked away in this little verse, you have the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a beauty to behold. It's a beauty to behold. The gospel of Jesus Christ in, in Genesis 9.23. It's, it's, it's just wonderful to see that. Praise the name of the Lord. He's a great, great Savior. There was no way out and you rescued me. Thank you. God bless you. I appreciate you being with me today. And I pray that this message is a blessing to you. God's grace. You had always been my closest friend even though I'd never defended that I was so far away as far as ever I could stray but you were there to bring me 